Blender updates usually come in one of two different flavors. You have the big marquee updates that have four or five really flashy, attention-grabbing new features, and you have the more low-key updates where you tend to have lots and lots of very small changes, which are just as important, but it doesn't make for a very interesting video. I thought Blender 4.4 was going to be one of those releases, so I wasn't planning to make a video, but I've noticed two or three different things in the release notes that I think are definitely worth talking about, so that's what this video is. Before we start, I have two quick announcements. Firstly, I've just created a free new add-on called Mesh Cleaner. It's a really simple utility that just groups together some of the most common mesh cleanup tools that I use, especially when I'm dealing with objects like this that I've downloaded from the internet because the conversion process that a lot of download sites use means that they almost always have hidden mesh errors that need to be fixed. So if we go into edit mode here, you can see this is mesh cleaner and we can check for doubles and it tells us how many doubles we have, which is thousands in this case. So we can just remove those. We can uh, detect the number of triangles and we can just convert this to quads. Now we have nice quad topology. We can check the normals and fix any uh, flip normals that we have. We can check for mesh holes and fix those. And if we've got any loose geometry, we can get rid of that too. We can also just clean up everything by pressing this button, which runs the whole thing. Or we can right click and clean up. This is a free add-on, but if you'd like to buy me a beer to help support the development of tools like this, it would be appreciated. I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick up a copy of Mesh Cleaner. Secondly, while you're over on my Gumroad page picking up Mesh Cleaner, you might want to check out some of my other products as well, because until the end of February, there's a 35% sale on everything. If you use the code SALE35 at checkout at Gumroad, you'll save essentially a third on any one of my products. So if you've been meaning to pick up the Essential Topology Guide, the Interior Masterclass or the Exterior Masterclass, now is a really good time to do so. I have big updates coming for all of those courses in the next month or so. So it's a good idea to get a hold of it now and you will get all of those updates in the future. The first update that I want to talk about is in the compositor space. And this alone, I think is worth upgrading to Blender 4.44 because we finally have a much needed, much waited for improvement to the glare node. If you're trying to replicate a realistic camera, you really need to have glare in your scene whenever you have bright highlights. I've added this random sphere into the scene and give it a really bright emission. It's actually lighting up most of this scene alone. And it doesn't look realistic at all because it doesn't have any sort of glare, which you would expect from a real camera. The glare system that used to be in Blender was pretty poor, to be honest, and it hasn't been updated for a long time. So we now have this new glare node. And if I change this over to say Bloom, uh, you can see that we have all of these new settings and it just in general does a much better job of replicating an accurate glare. So you can change the size really easily here. And this alone, I think works, seems to work at least much better than it did in the original version. You can add a tint to the glare. So if we wanted to make this look a little bit blue, we can do that. And then you can alter the saturation over here. You can also change the total strength really easily uh, without having to mess on with figures like you used to before. We have the threshold, which you've always had. We also have this smoothing, which will basically uh, decide whether you want only the brightest parts to have the glare or whether you want it to be applied over everything else as well. And this is a really cool feature. You can also set a maximum. One problem that you used to always get with the old glare node is if you had one or two lights in the scene that were very, very bright, they would get an incredibly strong glare attached to them. And there was no real way to fix that. Whereas now you can add a maximum on there of say three, and then it will never uh, take the brightness over in this case, a three. Another cool thing that this does is it actually has different outputs, which you can use for compositing. So you can have this one over here, which will only show you the parts of the mesh that have basically had some sort of glare applied to them. Or you can pick out just the highlights where it will find basically the brightest parts of the image. Another update that I think is incredibly important, but really easy to overlook is that we have a new output standard for videos. Before, if you wanted to use the FFmpeg, the best uh, video codec that you could use was H.264. H.264 is over 20 years old right now. 
It's very well supported, but we have much better standards and we now have an upgraded version, which is H.265. H.265 produces file sizes, which are about half the size of 264, and it actually often produces better quality uh, images as well. It's especially good if you're exporting uh, 4K video or something that's very high resolution. And it also supports a uh, 12-bit color depth which H.264, at least in Blender, does not. So you can have nicer quality images and much, much smaller file sizes. Another interesting feature in Blender 4.4 is the ability to add custom splash screens. Now, I know you're probably thinking that doesn't actually sound very interesting at all, but it is to me, and I'll explain why. It's for two reasons. The person who made the update and the reason that they gave for making it. See, this update was actually added by Sony Interactive Entertainment, SIE. If you're not aware, SIE is the branch of Sony that develops the PlayStation. And the reason why they said that they added this feature, the whole purpose of it, is so that you can use Blender better in a production environment. The idea is that you can have specific versions of Blender that will be used on specific projects and you'll use a custom splash screen to tell the teams which version they're using or you can have even specific versions of Blender for let's say the sculpting team or the look dev team and they'll all have their own add-ons and things and they'll be easily identifiable. Now I think that's significant because Sony are probably not going to be spending developers time and money making tools to essentially make Blender more industry compatible unless they were planning to use it for something. In the original commit, it specifically mentions companies like Ubisoft using systems like this. Ubisoft already use Blender in part of their workflow. The, um, I think it's the Ubisoft animation team already use Blender. So this suggests to me that Sony are going to be getting more involved with Blender and using it more in their pipelines in the future, which could be very significant for Blender's development. So one final thing that I thought was definitely worth talking about, but it's really easy to overlook, is an upgrade to the NVIDIA Optics Denoiser. This is the default denoiser that's used in the viewport because it's usually faster. I know a lot of people just prefer to use it even for final renders, and it now has much better quality. I have two versions of the same image here. This is just the example that was given on Blender's website. And it looks the same from a distance, but if you start zooming in, you can see that this one, especially because of the, uh, the subsurface scattering, it has all this really horrible blocky artifacts all over the place. And if we zoom in on this one, you can see that it does a much better job. Also uh, over here where we just have a plain background, like it's doing a significantly better job of cleaning this image up. And it's just as fast as far as I know, I can't tell any difference in the time that it takes. It also handles uh, color a little bit better. You can kind of see that on the purple up here. I don't know how well this will show up on the YouTube video, but it's doing a better job of retaining colors properly instead of making everything look smudgy and weird. So if you're in the middle of rendering a project out, you do want to take into account that things might look a little bit different if you render one in one version of Blender and then you switch over to 4.4. So that just about covers everything that I wanted to talk about in Blender 4.4. Remember, you can save 35% on all of my products until the end of February with the code SALE35 at checkout over at Gumroad. Also, pick up a copy of Mesh Cleaner. Like I said, it's free, but if you would like to donate some money, that would be great. Let me know what you think about it, and if there's any features you would like added to that add-on, let me know about that too, and I'll see what I can do in the future. Hope you found this video helpful, guys, and I'll catch you in a few days with another one.